morning. The November 25th, 2020 meeting of Halliburton County Council is now in session. Warden Liz Danielson presiding. Good morning, everyone, on this snowy day. Um, Mike, if you could take a roll call, please. Councillor Moffat. Present. Warden Danielson. Present. Councillor Roberts. Present. Councillor Kennedy. Present. Councillor Burton. Present. Councillor Ryle. Present. Councillor DeVolin. Present. And Councillor Shell. Present. Thank you. Could I have a mover and a seconder for adoption of the agenda, please? Councillor Shell, Councillor Moffat. Thank you. By Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor Moffat. Be it resolved that the November 25th, 2020 Halliburton County Council agenda be approved. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest today? Hearing none, uh, could I have a mover and a seconder to adopt the minutes of October the 28th? Councillor DeVolin, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. By Councillor DeVolin, seconded by Councillor Roberts, be it resolved that the minutes from the October 28th, 2020 meeting of Halliburton County Council be adopted as circulated. All in favor? Carried. So we have no business arising and no delegations. So we'll move right into our reports. Um, and it looks like our first report is with uh, Ms. White for planning. Good morning, Charlesy. Good morning. The first report we have today is just planning department update. And first item is just a notification to council of a consultation that's going on. Uh, the Government of Canada is looking at creating a new Canada Water Agency. And uh, there's an online link there if you wish to participate. Uh, what they're looking to do is create an agency that'll work together with the provincial and territorial governments, as well as local municipalities, um, indigenous communities. And uh, I think they're looking for some varied input. So the link is there, should you wish to use it. Climate change update, uh, just a quick note, the working group meetings have been booked for early December and those meetings uh, will kind of be the kickoff to uh, the county and local municipalities working on implementation of the municipal mitigation plan, as well as um, looking to gather the 2019 greenhouse gas emissions data for each municipality, which will then obviously be reported back to uh, county council and the local municipal councils. Included here as well under climate change, there's a climate change resource for local municipal government uh, officials. And I have also included the link there just for information purposes. On November 27th, which is this Friday, uh, the planning as well as um, in some cases building and other departments at the local municipalities will be meeting with the county and uh, some affordability, affordable housing staff from the city of Cortha Lakes. And we're working as a technical team to review um, applications that have been made for um, some funding for affordable housing within the county and each of our local communities. So once those projects have been reviewed by the, by the team, then they will be forwarded on to the Affordable Housing Steering Committee. And then finally, Land Division, there is another report uh, following this one, just a summary of the meeting that took place and the next meeting will be December 14th. The Schedule A to this report includes the ongoing planning applications and Schedule B outlines some GIS projects that are underway uh, here at the county. If there's any questions, I am happy to answer them. Any questions on the planning report? Uh, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Um, just one on the affordable housing. So that's only with uh, the group from City of Cortha Lakes. That's not any other uh, providers of affordable housing in the county? So there was an intake uh, through, yeah, it's the, the city of Cortha Lakes as our service provider and applicants um, made application for consideration. So if there's some in Dysart, it will be actually Dysart local municipal staff as well as county staff and a few staff from, uh, from that as well. Any other questions? Could I have a mover and a seconder to accept this report? Councillor Burton, Councillor Moffat, thank you. 
moved by Councillor Burton, seconded by Councillor Moffat, be it resolved that the November 25th, 2020 staff report on planning department activities be received for information by Halliburton County Council. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to your national disaster mitigation uh, funding intake. Yes, so thank you. This is actually a request for a resolution of support. Uh, we're putting together in partnership with a number of partners, so the two conservation authorities, Trent Severn Waterway, uh, our application under the 2020 intake for federal funding under national uh, natural disaster mitigation. And uh, the deadline is, it was a very short intake. It was only two weeks. So the deadline is actually next week. Uh, so really looking for a, a resolution of support to put an application forward to help support our um, LIDAR and flood mapping project. And we are currently working through what those deliverables would be um, because as you know, we have in our current budget, a amount for each year that we've um, been working on. And this would be in addition to that. So we're, we're looking at what can we do in addition to the regular program um, to, to get to the completion faster. So with support from the federal government, uh, hopefully we will be able to do that. So I'm, I'm just looking for a resolution of support, please. Any questions or thoughts, Councillor DeVolin? Yeah, Charles, does this, so does this give us the ability to kind of catch up? Because some of this process has been a bit more delayed than some of us uh, would have expected. Is partial catch up, total catch up if we're successful in this, uh, in terms of where we thought we would be, you know, from a couple of years ago? I would say a partial catch up. Uh, unfortunately, some of our partners were still dealing with um, COVID and the way in which they have their staff working or how they're working. Uh, but yes, definitely a partial catch up. And um, I think we would we still would be in line for the original completion date, which I believe was 2023. Uh, so this again, will just help us move that forward. Any other questions? Could I have a mover and a seconder to uh, approve this request? Councillor DeVolan? And Councillor Kennedy. Moved by Councillor DeVolan, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council recommends and supports the application of 50, for 50% funding under Stream 2 flood mapping and Stream uh, 3 flood mitigation plans to be used for hydraulic and hydrologic models determination of the regulatory flood line of the Gull River and Burnt River systems risk assessments, flood mapping, mitigation planning, and prevention through the National Disaster Mitigation Program funding intake 2020. All in favor? Carrie. <coughs> okay, so the next item uh, is on the agenda because we, we have experienced an extraordinary number of blue and green algae blooms uh, in the last period of time in an in a unusual period of the year. Um, and uh, Charlesy will have some information to give to us, but it seemed to me that because they were almost throughout the county that this might be the best place to talk about um, uh, whether or not we wanted to make a delegation about this. There seems to be another circumstance where there's a gap in, in communications between MOE and, and ourselves and, and a question about responsibility for communicating uh, uh, these blooms. So maybe Charlesy, you could uh, let us know what you've discovered and then we'll have a brief discussion about it. Thank you very much, Warden. Uh, I have contacted and spoken with our health unit as well as a couple of neighboring health units just to see if the process is similar, uh, if there's any uh, changes that others maybe are doing that we could uh, utilize here within the county. Uh, but the standard uh, process at this point is if there is a request put in for someone uh, by someone to test to see if there is blue green algae uh, in their water. Uh, the contact is the Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Parks. And so they will send out staff to inspect. And if they feel that yes, there may be uh, some form of algae because it's not necessarily just blue green, uh, they will identify, uh, do some sampling and some testing and send it away to get toxicity reports. 
Once those results are back, uh, the ministry shares that information with the health unit, as well as the person or body who reported uh, to the ministry. Then my understanding is the ministry sends a notice uh, as well to the uh, local municipal CAOs and people who may be in the general area who the ministry feels could be impacted. That, so, so they call that the local community um, response and any health related issues. So dealing with water intakes and proper, um, making sure you have safe water to drink and use in a dwelling. Those questions are then directed from the ministry to the health unit and the health unit, um, they do not provide communication over whether it be social media or online, identifying the lakes, the locations, any of that information. Uh, my understanding from our health unit was in the past that has occurred and there've been complaints uh, from the people who are in those areas due to the impact um, of their property value or people knowing and um, really the message the health unit wants to get across is they're happy to share that information with the local municipalities, but it really is the ministry's information to share. And uh, they will work with local residents with regards to how close is this to your uh, water intake? Is, what's the toxicity level so people understand? Uh, because again, this isn't something you can just boil out of your water um, to make it safe to drink. And then just notifying people, you know, you shouldn't be swimming and you should be keeping your pets uh, out of the water that may, may have these blooms in it. And so that's the information that I've been provided. Um, I, you know, I, I would wonder how people could call and ask questions about what, what they would do if they don't know that there's a problem. Like there, there's just a, a real gap in, in people actually being notified. Uh, I noticed that you said something about MOE would contact people who might be impacted, but <laughs> that to me means they'll, they'll contact the CAO of the municipality. And, and uh, they confirm and, they do, yes. And although they seem to be continuing to say that they maintain responsibility, both MOE and the health unit, they're not advising anybody. And my concern is who, who's liable when something goes off the rails? Um, I'll, I'll go to Andrea first because I think you might have some, some health uh, information and then Brent. Okay, thank you, Warden. Um, actually, Charles, you summed it up pretty well. I did have a board of health meeting last week and I brought up the question, but we did have a uh, uh, information from uh, the, uh, now I'm not gonna remember his name, but the person who sent me that email that I forwarded to Carol and Liz and, and whatnot from the health unit. Um, we had a presentation, uh, the board did, regarding blue-green algae. And so their job is to sort of show, they've got a little rack card and to, to, to show what it looks like and what you should do if you see it. But it isn't their job to do that notification. So they likened it to sort of poison ivy. This is what a leaf of poison ivy looks like. Uh, you know, that it could be here, but, uh, and if you get poison ivy, then, you know, you might this is how you would treat it etc so it's their their job it really is the ministry like so I see that flow uh, maybe the gap in communication is the ministry back to the CAOs and back to the mayors I I, I don't know uh, I think the health unit's doing what they're supposed to be doing in terms of warning of what blue girl, green algae looks like uh, what to do if you see it but it isn't their responsibility to then contact Mrs. Jones on Gr Grass Lake to tell her that she has it in front of her property. So, mm, I, I hesitant to say what I'm thinking. Um, I'll, I'll go to Councillor Devolin and then Councillor Moffat. Uh, uh, my first thoughts are, and that explains why it's a communications muddle. And. Uh, so thank you, Andrea. I mean, to me, the raison d'etre for, for health is to protect public health and communication of a said risk is the first and primary part of it. So if that's not the case uh, or, or how we uh, interpret this as municipal politician versus the way the ministry do, then, then absolutely I'm in favor of having a delegation because uh, to me, it's no different than a pandemic. It's just a local area one and a body of water potentially. And, uh, that if we could take steps to uh, resolve that, if that is indeed their understanding of the responsibility in this. And that's no disrespect to the uh, the local health unit, whatever. If that's the rules under which they march, then then 
I'm prepared and would like to take issue with the appropriate ministers uh, in that regard. My concern is that the, the health units aren't consistent in their in their treatment of this. There are some health units that do do communicating uh, out to the public, and some that don't. And and I I don't really understand that. Um, and and I I don't know that I accept the example of of putting uh, blue green algae bloom and the results of of consuming that to uh, to poison ivy. Um, but uh, but we'll go ahead to uh, Councillor Moffat. Uh, thank you. I, I uh, agree with the idea of the delegation and I, the, it's definitely a communication breakdown and the emails that we've been exchanging here in the background that landed this at the table today is, is it's, the, it's the who's on first game again. So we have um, Lake Associations and of course a CHA and you know they all do a really great job. We've never had as many engaged folks in as many engaged Lake Associations. The disconnect for me is fully understanding the, the desire for privacy or um, uh, secrecy in, in, in preserving or preventing any effect on property values. But I would like to think that um, preservation of life values trumps that. And so while Lake Associations do a really good job in the vast majority of cases of representing their members, municipalities represent all taxpayers. And so that's what I can't quite reconcile is you know, the, the right to know versus the need to know versus who delivers the message. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit more complicated than one might originally have thought. And, and I think we need to sort that out because um, I, don't, I don't know, as you mentioned, uh, Warden, about liability, you know, is it incumbent upon a municipality to notify its taxpayers and how can it do that if, they're not, if, if the municipalities aren't told? So that's sort of the, the, the breadcrumb trail I'm looking for is how do all these groups work together instead of in silos uh, for an agreed upon outcome that is in the best interest of informing the public. That's what I'm looking for. Well, and I, I think that, uh, you know, there, there might be a benefit to, uh, to, you know, sort of establishing a small working group to, to come to some agreement on how we handle this. And, and another one of my concerns is that the amount of time that it takes uh, first to call somebody from MOE, then for them to respond and come up and do the testing. The testing is sent off and takes a number of days to get back, uh, by which time somebody's consumed, you know, uh, portions of blue-green algae. Uh, uh, there's obviously a huge educational portion to this, which I, you know, I, I know that CHA is looking at, but, uh, you know, we might also through our, our environment and stewardship committees uh, uh, consider um, I, I like the idea of a delegation, um, and I, I wouldn't say that we'd pass a resolution now about that because we've got delegations to Roma on, on the agenda later on. Uh, Councillor Roberts, you wanted to make further comment? Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I'm still unclear on what the delegation is. First of all, who is it to, and what are we asking? Because there is a process. Now, as Charles, he laid out, the process is to report to the to the ministry. And I think if you want me as your uh, health unit board member rep, I can ask the health unit to do more promotion about what it looks like, what the dangers are, and what the process is if you spot it. Like that could be, a, you know, they do all kinds of different campaigns, different times of year. But I, I see that there is a process in place. Uh, so I, I'm really unclear what the delegation is all about. And, I'm, and I didn't mean to lessen the uh, harm to liken it to poison ivy. I'm just saying the health unit's responsibility is to promote health risks. And then they, they do have the information there of what to do. And you don't want people reporting to two agencies. It's not the health unit's responsibility to be reporting that back. Uh, Charles, he laid that out. So I'm still unclear of what you what other people are looking, other councillors are looking for. I would go to Councillor DeVolan and then Councillor Rael. I guess where I would start, I, I get the education part, I get the, the testing and the protocol leading up to the point that there's a confirmation. My question is, uh, it, and maybe uh, I'm not perceiving this the way that it actually is, is written in legislation and policy, that once that is, then, then somebody has to be responsible for communicating that out. And in my mind, that is clearly not the municipalities. 
if there's evidence or they can show me policy or legislation uh, that uh, that is the case, I will stand corrected. And uh, once we have that, then we'll need to develop where we go forward. But I'm not sure at this time, uh, and I would definitely like some clarification that after we have positive results, then the nuts and bolts, and then somebody has to have primary responsibility. And to me, it appears that at a certain point, that's kind of coming to us as a municipality. And I guess I have a problem with that. If it's clarified that it indeed that is legally true, then I'll live with it and uh, we'll plan and roll on. Councillor Rael. This sounds, oh, it's not, they're not the same, but it sounds like the problem is similar to the COVID problem and that you have the remedial problems and then you've got the preventive problems. Um, so we've got, we, we've, we've been talking about the remedial. Is there any way, shape or form that a prevention or some kind of a reduced opportunity for this stuff to get wherever it needs to go could be addressed? And is there an education program that would enable that? Or are we at totally at the mercy of this thing with no way to stop it? Well, I, we've, we've got a climate change uh, action plan. We, we're working on a, a shoreline preservation uh, bylaw, which I think is a huge portion of, uh, of trying to reduce this risk. Um, there may be other things that we can do, but at this point, I think we really need to resolve this uh, issue of communications and who's responsible. I'm just afraid that, that someone is going to consume too much of a blue-green algae bloom and get violently ill or, or, or lose an, an animal that's worth thousands of dollars uh, and, and sue the municipality for not letting them know that there was a problem. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to deal with something if you're not told that there is a problem. Uh, Councillor Moffat. Uh, yeah, and I would agree that, you know, notwithstanding the, the, um, the breadcrumb trail at the provincial level, uh, at some point, there should be a conversation about what we're going to do as elected officials uh, between and among our various municipalities and our, what are we going to do? So if there is a blue-green algae uh, in one of our municipalities and the CAO is notified and someone mentioned earlier, maybe it goes to the mayors, great, what do we do with that? So, you know, it's about that internal sharing too, for what reasons and to what outcome. So uh, there's, we have to follow up from top to bottom, I think. Um, I, I should, because I said something about animals, I should say that the health unit has made it quite clear that they're responsible for human health and it's the homeowner's responsibility to look after their animals. Um, I just, you know, right now there have been blue-green algae blooms in three of our four municipalities. Um, that says a lot at this time of year. Councillor Roberts. So, so to start with, would you, would uh, the other county councillors like me to ask the uh, staff member at the Board of Health to do a delegation to council, the one that I saw uh, as a report on what the health unit's responsibilities are. And we can start from that with that, you know, with the, with the Zoom format, it's not that hard to do a delegation. They don't have to come up and they can, would, would that help? I, I, I tend to think no. I mean, it's, it's, okay. it's possibly good information but I don't think it's going to help the communications problem or, or what we see as there being a communications problem. Um, but I'd, I'd look to other members of council to say if they would uh, support that. Councillor Moffat. Um, uh, that would be uh, great. And it would also be a bit of motherhood because the, the person will come and read from the playbook, which has just been described to us. And I think it's up to us to um, whether there's a small working group, uh, is to get the various parties that are already attentive to the, to the matter to come together to figure out how we as, an, as a broader community are going to work together to keep each other safe and, and what's the most important, what's the leading factor uh, in having those conversations or crafting any outcome. And whether that involves a delegation or not doesn't matter so much, I don't think, uh, hearing the conversation, uh, it, but it really is about figuring out what we're going to do for our, our taxpayers and our community. So to the question of delegation, uh, just a general um, uh, show of hands at this point in time um, to be solidified by a resolution later on, do you see the need for a delegation? Do you see that there could be some benefit to, to doing that? I, I know I, I certainly do, but I'm not sure that everyone agrees. Uh, who, 
a show of hands for who thinks we should do a delegation. So that's four of us. Uh, Madam Warden, do you mean, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I think I misunderstood. Do you mean have someone from the health unit make a delegation to us or for us to make a delegation at Roma? For us to make a delegation ah. to Roma. Still only four hands? Okay, all right. Uh, so if you could craft uh, that as part of our uh, resolution later on, uh, Mr. CAO, that would be good. Yes. Did I ask which ministry? Uh, MOE. Okay. Uh, uh, Councillor DeBolin, you wanted to comment? It, no, just we're going to craft the resolution later. That which ministry or ministries that we might, uh, sometimes when we had issues that overlap ministries, and to me there's here, uh, environment and health, that, that we have done them jointly in the past. But, but we can discuss that at the later part when we're talking about the delegations for Rome. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to uh, administration reports. Um, and the first is a status report, uh, I believe from um, our uh, public works manager. Good morning, Mr. Douglas. Good morning, Madam Morton. Uh, well, uh, as you can see from today, we are um, finished our summer maintenance. Um, so just go through uh, um, as I usually do with the uh, sort of the three page uh, summary. Um, first with capital, um, all our road work uh, is complete with the exception of, and it's not gonna get completed this year, is the uh, 2019 warranty work for, um, for Miller. We did um, come to an agreement with them and uh, they are coming back and doing a fair bit of uh, remedial work, asphalt patching and uh, some re, um, redoing of the surface treatment on uh, three of our roads. Bridges, um, Hawk, Lake Road Bridge, that's a success on time, on budget. Um, we're pleased with that work. Um, Eagle Lake, a little slower, a um, little more damage done uh, by the salt over the years, so a lot more chipping away. It is currently half finished. It will remain one lane um, through the winter. Um, and we've got a number of uh, uh, engineering studies for some of our structures uh, currently underway. Uh, and under operations, we are, uh, well, actually looking out the window today, maybe not gonna finish the uh, traffic counting, but uh, we'll look for some opening in the, uh, in the snow. Um, finish that up for 2020. Um, we've removed move the radar sign that's uh, in front of Tim Hortons on County Road 21. It is now over uh, by the hospital. If you're coming into town, you know, you'll see the, uh, the speed sign there. Um, the idea there is to, is to leave it there for a little while and then move it up towards Sir Sam's as we approach uh, ski season on uh, Halliburton Lake Road on County Road 14. Um, and then um, with the, with the uh, end of the uh, summer season, I just wanted to reflect back a little bit. Um, we've had uh, one of our best uh, summer seasons thus far, um, been very, very productive, um, completed all of our uh, to-do to work um, for this year. Um, which I attribute that to um, no major um, fleet breakdowns. Staff have uh, worked very well together. I know it's a COVID year, um, should have been more difficult, but uh, we've uh, accomplished everything we wanted to. But I think the major, uh, one of the major reasons is the um, supervisors and the working four persons have coordinated uh, all the work and they've done a fantastic job. So we've done um, many kilometers of ditching, um, replaced 30 plus culverts, um, less patching this year, knock on wood, uh, hundreds of guideposts um, and warning and regulatory signs have been replaced. Um, lots of uh, roadside brushing, there's always more of course. Um, rail trail brushing is complete. We've re um, um, fixed up some of the soft spots on the rail trail, put some, um, some uh, larger gravel down there to firm it up. Um, two major uh, washouts on the rail trail have been, um, have been uh, firmed up as well. So, you know, all in all, a uh, uh, fantastic summer. Any, uh, any questions? Any questions on this report? Councillor Roberts? 
Just a comment, how nice to hear that, that the staff are all working. I mean, they always work hard, but just that coordination piece. And uh, that's, that's really great. We don't, I don't know a lot of the county staff myself and personally, but I just uh, shout out and say thank you to them for, for uh, being able to get all that work done and working well together. It's great, great to hear. Thanks very much. Any other comments or questions on this report? Um, I don't have any uh, identification of the need for a resolution, but I think we do need one to accept the report. Um, if I could have a mover and a seconder to receive this report. Councillor Burton, Councillor Roberts, thank you. Moved by Councillor Burton, seconded by Councillor Roberts. Be it resolved that the November 2020 status reports on capital projects, operations and road maintenance be received for information by Halliburton County Council. All in favor? Carried. Thank you so much, Mr. Douglas. Thank you. Okay, we're now uh, going to be receiving financial uh, reports. So we would call on our treasurer. Nope. Good morning, board and counselors. Good morning. Did you want me to go ahead with the check register? Um, yes, please. And all of the reports that you've got. All righty. So the check register for October 2020 totaled $3,423,862.53. Any uh, questions okay. on that? I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was waiting for you uh, for the next one. Okay, is there a mover and a seconder to receive the check register? Councillor DeVolin, Councillor Moffat. Thank you. Moved by Councillor DeVolin, seconded by Councillor Moffat. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the staff report on the check register for October 2020. And further, that it be recommended that the check register for October 2020 with checks, EFTs, and PAPs totaling $3,423,862.53 be hereby approved. All in favor? Carried. All right, with the payroll register. The payroll register for October had three pays and totaled $650,016.26. Any questions? Uh, mover and seconder to receive this report. Councillor Shell, Councillor Kennedy. Moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the staff report on the, on the payroll register for October through 2020, and further that the payroll register for October 2020 with net direct deposits totaling $650,016.26 be hereby approved. All in favor? Carried. Year to date actuals. Looks like we're doing quite well. Yeah, we're on track for the end of the year. Um, year to date actuals at the end of October. Um, operating expenses we had spent to 83.2%. Um, capital expenses, capital purchases, we had spent 57.5. Um, of the annual budget that budget levy, that meant we had used 62.3 percent, um, and 10 twelfths of the annual budget is actually 83 83.33 percent. So we are on budget right now. Included in the amounts also are the amounts related to COVID. So um, there's in total 338,719 dollars of COVID expenses included in those. Any questions on this report? Could I have a mover and a seconder to receive it? Councillor Roberts and Councillor Moffat, thank you. Moved by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Moffat. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the staff report on the year-to-date revenue and expenditures as at October 31st, 2020. And further that the year-to-date revenue and expenditures as at October 31st, 2020 be hereby approved. All in favor? Carried. And you're also going to report on the tariff and fees? Yep. 
Um, the proposed uh, 2021 tariff of fees bylaw is included. Um, there's been some minor changes. We added uh, an option to purchase a county flag for $80. We changed some of the pricing, um, minor increases, and uh, otherwise the rest is just sort of administrative changes. That's it. Are there any questions on the tariff of fees? Hearing none, can I have a mover and a seconder to accept the uh, rep report? Mover and a seconder. Councillor Moffat, Councillor Kennedy. Moved by Councillor Moffat, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the staff report on the proposed 2021 tariff of fees bylaw and that a tariff of fees bylaw reflect reflecting the proposed changes be presented for approval. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Thank you. So I've now got a couple of reports from our director of IT. Good morning, Mr. March. Good morning, Warren Madam Flynn, members of council. So the first report I have um, in front of you is giving a, a post-mortem of the email server outage we had a couple of weeks ago. I think everyone's familiar with the, uh, the issues we had over November 9th, leading November 10th. So I just felt it was important to give council a rundown of, of what happened and what we did and the reason for the, uh, uh, the length of that outage. I didn't want to get too much into it at this point, unless anybody has any specific questions about what happened, but um, hopefully it was clear about what I had my, uh, in my report. I think you've outlined what happened. Um, are there any questions about this? Concerns going forward? Um, okay, could I have a mover and a seconder to accept this report? Councillor DeVolan, Councillor Shell, thank you. Moved by Councillor DeVolan, seconded by Councillor Shell. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the November 25th, 2020 report on the email server outage. All in favor? Carried. All right, we'll talk about security incident response policies. Thank you. So my next report is the draft policy for your consideration, uh, an information security incident response policy. It's been a mouthful. Um, if you recall, the county's IT department underwent a cyber resilience review last fall, and one of the areas identified for improvement was in incident management response. And so this policy was created to address this deficiency. Um, the plan basically defines the steps to be taken in the event of an information security incident. So examples of such incidents could be theft or loss of sensitive info, uh, an extensive malware outbreak, a ransomware outbreak, basically anything that significantly disrupts the county's information services. Uh, the policy lays out staff roles and responsibilities. Uh, in the event of an incident, we've also included some workflows for staff to follow, uh, again, take them through the process from, from start to finish, and hopefully it's a policy we never have to use. So unless council would like for me to walk through it step by, or paragraph by paragraph, I'm more than happy to take any, any questions you may have. Uh, Councillor DeVolan? I have no interest in that, Mike. <laughs> uh, having, having said that with what's gone on in the province and elsewhere with municipalities, I feel, have felt, since uh, the, in the absence of this, a bit naked in case something happened and uh, definitely in support of uh, moving forward uh, with this so that uh, if we have the misfortune that it happened, it's like emergency management uh, in a broader sense uh, that, that we have uh, a, a policy that, that's evolved, that we've done our due diligence and, and we'll know what to do uh, both in terms of staff and and uh, in terms of us as, as politicians <laughs> to know what will and how it will happen, it just will clarify a whole bunch of things and won't make it any less pleasant, but at least we'll understand what is and is not gonna happen. So thank you uh, for this work. Yeah, um, I, I thank you for that, Councillor Devon. I, uh, I, I know that um, Mike has been taking a deep dive into policy development in the last while to protect us and, uh, and it, it's much appreciated. 
can I have a mover and a seconder to receive this report? Councilor DeVolan, Councilor Moffitt, thank you. Moved by Councilor DeVolan, seconded by Councilor Moffitt. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the November 25th, 2020 staff report on the draft information security incident response policy and that Halliburton County Council adopts the information security incident response policy as presented. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay, I think we'd be bringing in our, uh, our chief, Tim, to talk about the assessment center and give a bit of an overview. Good morning. Good morning, Warden, members, members of council. Um, nice snowy day today. Um, I just presented this, uh, brought this report to, just to give um, a council an update where we are with the assessment center. Um, if you'd asked me this time last year what my major task was for the fall would be to um, the logistics of staffing and uh, um, operating a, uh, an assessment center for a pandemic virus, I would have said that um, I don't think so, but uh, here we are. So um, I have to say it's been a, uh, a huge challenge um, this year for, for all of us and everyone that's been participating. And um, just um, sort of to go from where we started to where we are, um, when this all started back in March, uh, the, um, uh, the province uh, basically had tasked the hospitals with um, uh, staffing assessment centers. Um, Triple HS originally um, <clears throat> wasn't going to um, participate as they didn't have appropriate st a number of staff to, to, to do this. So, um, but uh, they approached the uh, family health team and medical center and uh, us as the paramedic services in the county um, to see if we could help. And uh, quickly the funding was made available to, or told that the hospitals told that the funding was available. So we quickly scrambled together and um, uh, came up with a plan and we've been operating the assessment center since uh, the end of March. Um, originally it was, uh, a tent and a drive-through, but uh, as the bad weather began to, to arrive on us, uh, we had to figure out logistics for the winter. Uh, we had a trailer on site, <clears throat> which we um, maneuvered into position um, to, um, to have an inside um, assessment center um, for those people needing swabs, uh, either asymptomatic or symptomatic for COVID. Um, so I have to say that uh, the logistics of uh, preparing for the winter uh, were quite a challenge, and I, I really have to uh, thank um, Councillor Roberts for all her assistance uh, in helping us um, uh, with her staff uh, to maneuver the trailer into position where it was um, easily uh, accessible for snow plowing, um, but made it easily accessible for those people uh, coming to uh, be tested uh, uh, for COVID, um, along with um, the other logistics of uh, getting people in and out of the parking lots and Dysart supplying the tickets that we give to the people that show up for assessment so they can um, exit the parking lot um, um, without paying. Um, so it's been, uh, it, it has been a huge challenge and, and it's still ongoing, but I think we're pretty well prepared for winter. Um, the last steps are that the company that um, uh, the trailer is uh, rented from is going to skirt around, they're actually, I think they're gonna take the tires off and lower the trailer a bit to make uh, the steps a little bit more accessible. And uh, then they're going to skirt around the um, uh, the perimeter of it to just keep the snow from blowing in, and um, and and that's where we are. So we have two paramedic staffing it. Uh, the staffing changes um, depending on the um, uh, the requirement of swabs per week. Uh, it's been pretty quiet the last little while, um, but we could see the problem is is it's very dynamic and changes very quickly. Um, with certain areas going to orange. Uh, Presently, we're not in the orange category, but uh, if you go to the orange category, then people need swabs every week to go see loved ones or visit loved ones at um, long-term care facilities. Um, right now it's two weeks. Uh, so that may change in the very near future, but uh, this week we're staffed four days, um, but next week we're staffing five days uh, through the week um, in anticipation of uh, some more demand. So um, that's where we are right now. And, um, Again, we're operational for the winter and as long as we need to um, uh, staff uh, the assessment center um, to provide this, um, this service for our community. 
Thank you for your report. Um, you know, on behalf of the county, I'd really like to thank you and, and all your staff for all the work that they've done. I know that this has been a, an extraordinary project that you've been working on. And we really appreciate uh, uh, Councillor Roberts for your work with the Assessment Centre Working Group and, and helping them uh, uh, just kind of coordinate things on your property. Um, I'm just wondering, are there any questions on this report? Councillor DeBolin and Councillor Roberts. Just, just a comment. I mean, uh, gleaning only what I did through the press, uh, Councillor Roberts took a bit of heat about some of the costs and things associated with that uh, centre. And I would like to thank her and Dyser uh, for their efforts on behalf of all of us. And I'm not presuming to say we'll pick up the tab or whatever, but when one municipality bears costs, that really accrues uh, the benefits to the rest of us, that if it got of a certain scale, whatever that's appropriate, I would hope a conversation would come back here uh, to the county that we could talk about if, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a burden and a hardship on them uh, doing on behalf. If it's within the scope of what they can do it, uh, on behalf of the rest of us, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone at Dysert as well as our own county staff. Um, I, there have been some conversations between uh, Councillor Roberts and myself. Um, it's been a, an, an item of discussion in our EOC. Um, at, at the present time, I think that all the costs associated with the centre are covered, but there may be, uh, it, it may come back to us at some point in time that we'll have to, uh, to look at additional costs and, and how they might be shared out or, or carried by the county. Um, Councillor Roberts, did you had a comment or question? Yes, yeah, well, all this gushing, gee, gosh, thanks. But you know what, that's our job, right? That's, we, we do our job and uh, that, the assessment center was uh, put in that location uh, very quickly. Uh, we were at Dysart happy to help. Um, but then when we knew that this pandemic was not going away anytime soon and we had to prepare for the winter, it was important to have an agreement. I'm sure all of you county councillors, staff included, can understand why, uh, you know, legally we needed something it's because they were operating a, a, a service uh, and had structures on our property. So that was our main goal is to have some kind of mainly liability agreement. And Tim's been fantastic. He somehow got a uh, promoted to be the assessment center chair when he missed a meeting. So that's a, so kudos to, to Tim and his staff. And also uh, Mike Rutter has been excellent. And, you know, there was some misinformation in the press and it's one of those things, once, once it's spun out that way, it's really hard to pull it back. So um, personally, I just had to say, well, I knew what Dysart was doing. I knew what the county was doing. I knew what the parties were all doing. And I'm really happy to say that we have an agreement uh, and uh, in place, it's fair to um, what the costs are, it's fair to all parties, and it was never our intent to kick them out, it was never our intent to profit, the, the, the word rent was really uh, just some very basic costs, and um, I'm hoping that you know, it, it is a, a quieter winter here in Halliburton County. Let's hope that we can keep the cases down. Let's hope that uh, our assessment center can handle if we have another surge or another uh, situation. And I know that there are some rapid tests coming and I know uh, Dr. Souk said that'll be a game changer. So it's Doug Ford. So anyway, I'm happy to report we have an agreement. Just got to get the signatures on and, and it was a process. And um, yeah, I, I took a little sucker punch, but whatever, I'm still here. So I know the truth. Anyway, thank you all for your support. Thank you for that. Okay, could we have a mover and a seconder to receive this report? Councillor Roberts, Councillor Moffat, thank you. Moved by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Moffat. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the update report on the COVID Assessment Center. All in favor? Carried. Thanks so much, Tim. Right, I guess we'd be looking for the director of tourism. Let 
Now, how are you going to hand us our option, our cover option? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a secret way coming to you. Uh, good morning, warden and counselors. Uh, as you know, it's time to discuss our 2021 uh, cover for the tourism map and guide. A few uh, notes before I show them on screen. Um, as you know, in the past, we generally feature a number of different activities and they're sort of in separate boxes. But approaching 2021 and with the restrictions and you know, unknowns around COVID-19. We wanted the cover to have more of a classic cottage feel. And when we talk uh, about the destination management plan in a couple of weeks, that aligns nicely with that as well. We have had some comments from stakeholders in the past that we've shown a lot of activities, but we've never really shown that cabin or accommodation experience. So this year, uh, the recommendations, uh, you'll see the two cover options coming forward. The covers are a little softer, almost a little ethereal, um, and it does speak to uh, social distancing in a not such an obvious way. And um, and uh, what else do I need to say? I've got a couple notes. Let me quickly look. I think I've covered everything. So I will ask Mike March to pull the two options up on screen. So you'll note a couple of things. There's a boundary line in yellow around the imagery, and that is actually the county line. So those of us in the know would know that that's actually uh, the, the proper outline of the county. Um, and uh, you can see the distance there between the performers. You can see a cabin, which is uh, actually the first time we've ever shown an actual physical uh, building in our covers. Um, and uh, the fisher person there on option A, it's actually the first time we've shown fishing as an activity uh, back seven years. And I do have the past covers if there's any curiosity on, on what was uh, on those past covers, but I guess I will pass it on to uh, back to you for discussion. It looks like the abominable snowman in, the, in option B. <laughs> that is a hiker. And uh, I suppose we could tweak that image out but uh, myself I'm leaning toward option A if I'm honest but uh... yeah it doesn't look like a hiker um, <laughs> looks like a Sasquatch I'm sorry um, <laughs> Councillor Devolin I'll be brief as a newly minted grandfather obviously the one with the child <laughs> gets my vote Councillor Moffat <laughs> As much as I would love to vote for Sasquatch because it would be funny, I just can't do it. So it has to be the it has to be the fishing, <laughs> the fishing kid. Councillor Shell, I had the exact same thought, um, Warden Danielson, that that was. I, I, in fact, I'm sitting here pulling my face closer to the screen, thinking everybody can see what I'm doing, and I didn't want to appear that I didn't know what it was, and maybe thought it was my eyes. But I'm glad everybody commented that they thought it also looked like a Sasquatch. Um, Definitely the little the little fisher person on the left is also my my choice. Yeah, it's a sweet picture. Other Councillor Rail. Yeah, I think Ace as well too, although I, I, I wish we could figure out who that Sasquatch really is, <laughs> but I think Ace is the right choice. Councillor Roberts. Unmute there. So yeah, okay, so option B is out. Um, and I'm doing the same as Lisa, either you've got the camera right there and I'm like going zoom, coming in closer. And, I, and yes, I, I love the idea that the outline is the county. I think that's very clever. Um, and my only comment is, I don't know, it, it's like when I, you know, you just put stuff on the screen, so it wasn't included in our package. So we have that first impression look. And I just feel like they're fishing in the clouds. I, maybe it's, maybe it's my screen. Is, is that a, I don't know. I like, I like the fire, I like the cabin, I like the woods, I like the singers. I just, I, and I don't dislike children fishing. It just, my first impression is why is that person fishing on top of his head? But that's, You know, sorry. I didn't have that impression at all. I just okay. sort of, it's, it's like a, an image over an image that, uh, that you know, kind of uh, shows more opportunities um, I, I'm hearing support for uh, option A. Uh, is everyone pleased with option A or are there any recommendations about change? Councillor Burton. Thank you. I tried this a little while uh, back, Liz. I guess you didn't see my hand, but I'm, uh, 
I'm quite impressed with uh, with option A. I think it's very, very well done and it represents us very well. And I'm really pleased with the outline that they have uh, put on it. Mm -hmm. So we're agreed, option A. All Thank right, you. I have a mover and a seconder for a resolution on that. Councillor DeVolan, Councillor Burton. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor DeVolan, seconded by Councillor Burton. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council selects cover option A for the 2021 Explore My Halliburton Highlands uh, tourism publication and direct staff to move forward with print production. All in favor? Carried. Thank, Thank you, you for your work on that, Amanda. Okay, so the last item under administration is a discussion about ministerial delegations to Roma. I think we've we've agreed um, that one is required. Um, further discussion. You had a thought the other day about this, Councillor Devolin. Go ahead. Well, just that just that uh, I think because it has implications for two ministries, like we've done in the past with flood mitigation and whatever. I think that uh, health and environment, both of them, it should be copied to both of them because there's those two ministries and ourselves collectively minister. Uh, municipally in our communities and we just need to understand and or lobby for some clarification or modification in, in how this appears to work. Councillor Moffat. Um, I was on the uh, Roma delegation form uh, the other day for something Algonquin Highlands is doing and pleased to say that they've they've expanded it beyond 140 characters. Maybe, maybe they took a a bit of a hit for that, but it does it does say uh, it does say right on it that they want you to take one issue to one ministry. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't hit up uh, one of the other ministries after afterwards, like mail it out or something. But it, I mean, it, it does it just be warned. It does say that right on the application or on the delegation request form. So given that it's the uh, primary responsibility of MOE, I, I would almost think that that's where we should go, but uh, I would look for other thoughts. Councillor Burton, then Councillor DeVolan. I, I totally agree, but uh, my thought was as well the uh, Ministry of Health. And whether we follow up with a letter to them or, or just whatever, if we're not going to uh, pick them for a delegation, but uh, certainly the MOE, but I think we should uh, um, somehow contact the, the Minister of Health as well. Uh, Councillor DeVolan. Uh, I won't disagree. So um, I, am I, I'm hearing delegation to MOE with follow-up to the Ministry of Health. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Just just to follow up the, the question that I asked earlier when this topic came up. So what are we asking? I, and I'm not able to attend. I didn't register for Roma. Dicer has a council meeting that the one of the days, so I didn't register. But what are we asking? What What is the delegation ask. Councillor DeVolan? Uh, my question, and then go back to what I earlier said today, is once uh, this has been identified, in the end, in terms of communication and responsibility to the public to protect them and save them from harm, who's, who's primary? Like, uh, does, you know, the MOE, when they get done, does that clearly go on to health? Does it go on to health and then to us? I just clearly want to know when push comes to shove in the public view, who who will be held if it goes to court someday, who's going to be primary uh, in this uh, in this mess? And if it's us uh, and, and that is the way it is and it's not subject to change, then obviously we'll make plans uh, according to that. But to me, at this point, I have no idea. Uh, where that primary responsibility, and given the fact that the Ministry of Environments is the one that identifies it and certifies that it indeed has happened, then I think the discussion has to start there and then flow uh, on from there. So that's just, once it happens, who's who's uh, who's on the hook? Yeah, uh, you know, I, they, they continue to say, uh, they being MOE, that, that it is their primary responsibility, that there's no liability to the municipalities, but there's still a gap there for me. You know, people need to be advised that the, that that there's a risk to them and, and the, they certainly can't take action if they don't know. So uh, I think we need some clarification on that. And if it means that, in you know, ultimately 
they're responsible, but we decide to, to establish some kind of communications plan, well, so be it. Uh, it, it can't be that difficult to to make announcements on the local radio stations and and have something on the the websites of the uh, of the local newspapers, our own websites. I mean, there's there's a uh, there are ways to get messages out. Um, I, I know that the health unit talked about the the challenges associated with uh, with mail outs because so many of the of the mail outs go to their you know their primary home and they may be here and. You know, so that they never really get the uh, official written notification, and that takes too long anyway. So, uh, I, th I think hopefully that answers your question, Councillor Roberts. Yeah. Okay. So, are there any other delegations that you see uh, as being necessary for this particular conference? Hearing none, um, have you got a resolution crafted, Mr. Yeah. Scale? Okay, uh, could I have a mover and a seconder and we'll hear the resolution? Councillor Schell, Councillor DeVolin. Be it resolved that uh, Halliburton County Council directs staff to request ministerial delegations from the following. MOECP, read Blue Green Algae Communication Protocols. All in favor? Carried. Okay, moving into uh, reports from external boards and agencies. Uh, first is the uh, health unit. Um, are there any other comments uh, that you'd like to make, Councillor Roberts? Um, not on those minutes particularly, but that we did have a meeting last week where we had uh, a really thorough explanation of what happens when someone uh, it tests positive and the communication that takes place and the calls that make place take place rather uh, so they're not in these minutes or in this report but <clears throat> um, and I'm really pleased to say luckily our health unit hasn't been so overwhelmed like other areas that they definitely do the contact tracing they don't tell the uh, positive person go and call your own contacts because we're too busy <laughs> so uh, they are doing that and some of those calls are very emotional and very difficult to make people often keep, feel guilty when they find out that they're positive and they uh, were asymptomatic but test positive and that uh, there's um, so it's a it is quite a process uh, the, the calls that that take place and uh, so that was I found very you know it's, it's the human element right you, you're calling to tell someone that they what, what they need to do next and making sure that they have what they need. Are they able to self-isolate? Uh, they even get the supports for them. So if there's somebody that maybe doesn't know how to do online shopping or so, all that kind of stuff, there's, there's a lot of support and a lot of, a lot of work going into uh, the contact tracing and the whole COVID um, uh, situation with, at the health unit as obvious, but so that's it. it it's, uh, it's nice to hear I think people do need to hear that that background, that human aspect of, of the work that goes on. Everybody takes those sorts of things for granted. Uh, I was interested to hear it at our last uh, EOC meeting, the health unit rep saying that there was a considerable turnover in the people that do that work. It, it's just that it's hard on them. Um, okay, thank you for that. Anything from point in time? Nothing new at this time. Okay. Pretty uh, with COVID. <laughs> uh, there is nothing uh, much to speak of on the warden's caucus. We've just um, reconfirmed the same uh, priorities basically for next year as, as what we uh, um, had agreed upon earlier in the year when we had to, uh, to make a pretty quick change to uh, to things like uh, to broadband, the seniors' homes, the um, economic recovery, municipal recovery remain the priorities. Um, we will be having a special meeting, I think it's next Friday, uh, to receive and discuss the uh, um, successful proponent for the cell gap project. Um, so there'll be a little bit more discussion about uh, EORN and the work that they're doing then. Um, otherwise, um, there are no further general business meetings for the Warden's Caucus until the beginning of the year, at which point uh, they would have their, their 
Um, their, their first meeting of the year, which consists of basically some information and, and uh, you know, welcoming the new members um, and trying to uh, solidify those priorities and, and budget information for the following year. Uh, unless there's any questions, uh, we'll go on to joint and social housing. Any activity there, Councillor DeVolin? Uh, we meet uh, December the 2nd next week. And that because they're quarterly and that's the one, although it's virtual, that technically usually happens here. So I chair that. Okay, thank you. Um, a little bit of an update on professional recruitment. If I could maybe ask uh, Councillor Moffat to speak to that. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's your portfolio. <laughs> you didn't tell me I was going to have to say something today. Um, well, actually, we had a really good meeting yesterday, and um, uh, looking at some um, examining documentation and sort of reformatting some language. And there will be uh, actually, I'm going to have to tip to the CAO to ask if there's anything further we should or could say at the moment. It's just the council's going to see some things coming forward to um, further formalize, organize uh, the program in terms of, uh, in, in light of how it's matured and is maturing. So it's, it's good news. It's all, uh, it's all on the, it's all on the upside. So I don't know if Mr. CAO, if there's anything else you want to add there. I don't think so. It's really just, as you say, the, the program has evolved. And I think with a recruiter, uh, she's well, or she's becoming more aware of what the issues are and what our, our program needs to look like in order to effectively recruit. And so uh, we're going to bring back some recommendations on what that could look like and, and, uh, and see where County Council wants us to go. And you should see that in December. And, uh, and I, I just to, to add that uh, our recruiter is doing a really good job. We're seeing some successes there and uh, th that I'm really pleased to see. Hopefully it'll continue in that vein. Um, nothing on the land claim. I thought we were going to change that uh, heading. When we when we amend the procedural bylaw, uh, which we're in the process of doing, hopefully in December. Okay, thank you. Um, anything on the library board? We have a, a meeting coming up on December the 8th. Uh, Councillor Roberts, anything that you wanted to? Just uh, nothing, you know, not not when you read the minutes, but just knowing how important the libraries are in our community. And it was really a desire of the board to um, uh, as safely as possible, get the libraries open as safely as possible, do uh, curbside pickup, but also have the physical buildings open. And so not in those minutes, but uh, uh, we know that the the two larger branches, Dysart and Minden, have been open for quite some time, and the uh, smaller branches are open. And actually, the numbers are really quite impressive in terms of how many people, you know, still want to go in and get a book or go in and use the computer um, and, and use that service. So it's, uh, they've been doing a great job to make sure we are still providing library service in the county. Uh, Councillor DeVolin and Councillor Moffat. Uh, I'd like to express a thank you to the uh, library board and staff for uh, the Minden Library branch uh, serving as as a as a home for a provincial announcement a few weeks ago. Whatever uh, they were, uh, staff there were very good in support of and facilitating that uh, with the premier's advance team and all the all the complications that come with that. So I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, no comment on that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moffat. Uh, thanks. I just wanted to circle back on what Councillor Roberts had said, and, and I did note in the library board meeting that um, there was understandably an, an awful lot of angst around the decision uh, related to the Dorset branch, uh, which was transferred or I guess transitioned to a, a, a Book Depot program. Uh, and the numbers remain are remaining very strong. So the service is still being provided in, in the community and uh, people are still getting books and it's all very successful. So just wanted to just make note of that, that uh, sometimes transition change is difficult, but transitions are not necessarily uh, a death knell for services. Mm -hmm. and thank you for that. Cause it, it's something that might be considered going forward in, in other areas. Uh, Councillor Roberts. 
Yes, and just one last thing that we uh, that we're working on is we the, the agreements between the the buildings to the municipality, the work Thank needed, you. the sort of up. Yeah, I just remembered that at our last meeting because they're not in these minutes. Is that we really want as as the municipal reps on the library board, uh, we want to have clear understanding to make sure when the 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 uh, buildings that we own, uh, they the library staff put in requests for you know this door needs fixing this lamp needs replacing etc uh some of them are major some of them are minor but there isn't really a process to follow through and we don't really have clear agreements between the responsibilities of the municipality and and uh and the library it's a lease agreement with no money let's call it uh, responsibility agreements. So it's the desire to make sure that those things are clear. It's the desire to make sure that we know if the library staff have put in the request for these repairs um, that they get done in a timely fashion. So, you know, it was quite clear from the list that we saw that some of the things were were not minor. Uh, they weren't, uh, you know, nobody's being fussy when you can't feel secure in the bathroom without somebody walking in on you, uh, that's a problem. Uh, those sorts of things we really need, need to fix. So we're, we're, we've asked staff to, uh, to work on uh, some kind of formal le lease agreement so that the responsibilities are laid out clearly. Um, okay, could we have a resolution to receive the uh, reports from external boards and agencies? Uh, could I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Shell, Councillor Kennedy. Moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the following. The approved minutes from the October 15th, 2020 Halliburton Court of Pine Ridge District Health Unit Board of Health minutes, and the approved September 9th, 2020 minutes and the October 2014, 2020 draft minutes of the Halliburton County Public Library. All in favor. Carried. Okay, the next report is the Land Division Activity Report. Our Director of Planning will be speaking to that. Good morning, Warden and members of County Council. This is a summary of the last meeting, which was in November. Sorry, my screen froze. And just as a summary of the decisions made by the Land Division Committee, as well as a year-to-date total to the end of October, um, you'll note that there's uh, a number of, I, I guess we could call them rights of ways and lot additions, which are exceeding the number of new lots created. And I wanted to identify that hopefully in December, we will bring forward a report. Uh, as you may recall, last year we did showing, you know, where these new lots are being created and then putting those against the growth targets in our official plan. So you'll see that coming forward, hopefully next month. If there's any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to answer them. We look forward to seeing that report. Are there any questions? Could I have a mover and a seconder to receive the report? Councillor Burton, Councillor DeVolan, thank you. Moved by Councillor Burton, seconded by Councillor DeVolan. Be it resolved that the November 25th, 2020 staff report on land division activity be received for information by Halliburton County Council. All in favor? Carried. Um, other external boards and agencies, uh, any report from the Ontario Good Roads Association? Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Um, road school. It was, it's quite interesting that our numbers with uh, with our road school um, are, are way up, and, and we're we're trying to figure out with the with the virtual classrooms, and, and uh, we're trying to figure out just exactly why the numbers are are up so high. Uh, some of us figure that it could be possibly uh, there's some savings there, uh, travel, lodging, etc. But uh, I, I'm really pleased that in these times that, that the, the numbers are up. Um, we're busy working on our conference, our virtual conference. Uh, uh, we're getting quite a bit of interest um, uh, with it. Um, 
with our with our split a couple of years ago from Roma, there was concerns that um, uh, we probably wouldn't get the political side of uh, of our conference. And it, it was quite interesting when we uh, uh, opened our registration, which was a couple of weeks ago. Um, the first registration was a politician, so that uh, that made me quite happy. But the they are the numbers are up with, with our registration as well. I think you'll always find that there's a number of politicians that will not be able to resist good roads. Uh, any different, questions? For different reasons. For different <laughs> reasons. Any questions or comments uh, uh, about the upcoming conference or this report? Okay, moving on, uh, Councillor Devolan, do you have anything to report on EORN activities? We continue to meet and uh, as you'll uh, know what your next Warden Caucus proceeding with uh, um, potentially a successful uh, bidder in this. Uh, I can tell you that for some months I'm not going to be able to say very much, but I'm jumping up and down and uh, I'm over the moon. I guess is, uh, without betraying anything, I would say uh, better better than I might have uh, hoped for, although uh, nothing's done until it's done, but uh, I'm just saying is potentially for, for the people in Halliburton County, uh, better, better than, than, than uh, expected from my perspective. And, and uh, uh, CEO Rudder, would you concur? I have no comment to make. <laughs> <You're not supposed laughs> yeah. <to. laughs> Yes, but it, it is a very uh, sensitive time as the procurement process continues. And we know that we've got a good man on the ERN board to make sure that we've, uh, Halliburton County is well represented. We look forward to the future news. Um, anything on poverty reduction, Councillor DeVolan? Uh, not at this time. I, was, I missed their last meeting because of a conflict uh, with other meetings. Okay, um, I, if it's all right with everyone, I'm going to continue on until we get to closed, uh, at which point we can have a, a break um, when, when we're going into closed. I think that might be the, the best timing for that. Um, meeting calendar is next on the agenda. There was a, there was a couple of little changes that I gave to Mike. Um, Councillor Roberts? Yeah, and a couple of changes. I should have just sent these along ahead. Sorry. Uh, Dysart is not meeting on the 8th. We're not doing Committee of the Whole. And we meet on the 11th for our budget meeting, not the 10th. As well, we meet on the 15th. And I have, I'm not sure when the right time to bring that up is. I, I have some concerns that my meeting might not be done and it's the inaugural meeting. And that I did talk to Mike about, but uh, maybe I should save that for when we talk about the inaugural meeting, I don't know. Any other changes, Councillor Burton? Not really a change and I'm not sure if it's uh, important, but we do have a rail trail round table on the second. At, uh, at the Any other, the only other change that, that I noted was that the library board is listed for Wednesday the 9th. And in fact, we will be meeting on the 8th. Um, there was a, a conflict there with Algonquin Highlands in their virtual Christmas. So the board kindly agreed to right. change the date there. Okay, any other, uh, if there are no other comments or changes on the calendar, uh, we will move on to long-term service awards and Andrea Bull will be presenting that information. Good morning, Warden and Council. Good morning. Uh, as you know, typically we would uh, distribute our long-term service awards uh, in person on a regular scheduled council meeting. Um, but as uh, County Council isn't currently meeting in person, 
the warden has chosen to recognize our 2020 recipients through the report process. Uh, and then the awards will be distributed in person by uh, the employees directors following today's meeting. So I'd like to acknowledge the following staff who will be, who will be receiving a long-term service award in 2020. I'll start with our public works department, uh, Brian Maholland, engineering assistant, 40 years. Fred Simmons, seasonal laborer, 20 years. Moving on to the uh, paramedic services, and there's a large list of them this year. Um, Bradley Robinson, paramedic, 20 years. Christopher Parrish, community paramedic, duty officer, 20 years. George Sharp, paramedic, du duty officer, 20 years. Jim Young, deputy chief operations, 20 years. Jeff Schultz, paramedic, duty officer, 20 years. Randy Cox, paramedic, 20 years. Uh, Adam Payne, paramedic, 15 years. Chris Barrow, paramedic, 20 years. Curtis Lane, paramedic, 20 years. Glenn Story, paramedic, 20 years. Stephen Wolst, paramedic, 20 years. And last but not least, uh, myself, human resources manager, 15 years. Thank you for that. Clap, 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 clap. Um, you know, on behalf of us all, I, I particularly like to thank you, uh, Andrea, um, and congratulate you on the time that you've been here, along with everybody who's on this list. We're really and truly fortunate to have a group uh, mm -hmm. like this of, of dedicated employees that have stayed with us. And uh, um, we, we couldn't be in a better position when we see a list like this and see how long some people have stayed with us. So I would offer our congratulations to mm -hmm. everyone on the list and uh, um, hope that you continue to stay with us. And uh, I gather that the uh, actual awards will be handed mm -hmm. out by department heads. Any comments or questions? Could I have a mover and a seconder to receive this report? Uh, Councillor Roberts and Councillor Kennedy. Moved by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council receives for information the staff report outlining the 2020 Long-Term Service Award recipients. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Then we move on to a uh, uh, report from our CAO on the nomination results for Warden. Thank you. Uh, as uh, as noted in the report, we did receive uh, two um, uh, um, nominations uh, for the position of Warden, and they were both qualifying uh, nominations. Uh, we uh, have Councillor um, Brent, Brent Devolin and Liz Danielson, both uh, have submitted nominations. Um, the, as we have discussed at length, the election will take place uh, in, uh, in, on, in December and we will be doing that virtually. Uh, we will be sending out uh, detail on all of that uh, in the near future. Uh, and so once this, uh, once this report is received by County Council, each of the candidates, uh, will be given an opportunity to address uh, their peers for 10 minutes um, and, uh, and then uh, ex expressing why they would uh, like to stand for the position. And, um, and that would be done in the order in which the nominations were received. So Councillor DeVolin will go first and Warden Danielson will go next. Could I have a mover and a seconder to receive this report? Councillor Moffat and Councillor Burton. Moved by Councillor Moffat, seconded by Councillor Burton. Be it resolved that the nomination results for the position of Halliburton County Warden for 2021 be received for information by Halliburton County Council. All in favor? Carried. Warden De Bol or Councillor Devolin, sorry. I just unmuted. I proceed. Yes, please. All right, my first comment, I won't take anywhere near the time allotted uh, for this. 
Uh, good morning, fellow members of County Council. It's an honour and a privilege to present myself as a candidate for the position of warden for Halliburton County. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Councillor Roberts and Rael for the moving and seconding my nomination for warden. As a former warden, it's clear to me now the responsibilities and challenges in successfully fulfilling the role than the first time. In leadership's best results are achieved by transparency, communication, and involvement of all of County Council in our business, and I would endeavour to work to that end. I would not be able to consider the additional time to be required to fulfill this role if it weren't for the support of my family, my Minden Hills Council, and more specifically, my Deputy Mayor Shell. You know, County Council has reached the midpoint of our term, and the second half of the term will likely involve significant changes and challenges as to how municipal government operates and delivers services. COVID-19, evolving regulatory requirements, rapid population growth, both seasonal and permanent, tight labor markets and future diminishing federal and provincial fundings will require an evolution of how municipal governments will function in the near and distant future. Service delivery reviews, asset management, working from a distance using technology and connectivity, while moving to a more paperless approach to operations, offer an opportunity to take a proactive stance to shape and form the county for the future. Many of the activities of county and municipal staff and councillors are already working to achieve these objectives. Municipal leaders must be mindful to not lose the benefits of the current structure and operations while endeavouring to achieve po actual positive results in the changes that may be considered. The present members of council have already proven the willingness to tackle tough issues using our diversity of life experiences and strengths to provide thoughtful and respectful dialogue and negotiations. These characteristics will be clearly required and even more so in the next two years of our mandate as we deal with the matters already clearly ahead of us. Changes that will need to occur in Halliburton will involve municipal, county, City of Kawartha Lakes and Eastern Ontario governing bodies to achieve the best possible outcomes. I have a keen interest in nurturing these relationships to deliver outcomes that cannot be achieved by county efforts alone. Lastly, I'm not an unknown quantity to any of you in the county chamber. Uh, by now, all of you pretty well know my strengths and weaknesses that I would bring to the position of warden. I would ask that you would work with me collaboratively if I'm elected to provide the best outcomes in our decisions. Do not be afraid to point out my shortcomings so that the people of Halliburton have the best representation possible. I wear my heart on my sleeve, as you know, and I'll put in the time and energy to fulfill the role if you collectively support my candidacy. Thank you to all the members of County Council for the opportunity to stand for the Office of Warden. Thank you. And Councillor Danielson. Thank you. Um, and forgive me uh, for following my notes. I find myself a little bit nervous. Um, and I would like to start by sincerely thanking both Councillors Burton and Moffat for supporting my nomination. Um, and, and I'd like to say how proud I've been to represent you all and I, over the last two years. Um, and to represent Halliburton County as a whole. It's meant a lot to me and it's, it's made me very proud. Um, I, I do acknowledge fully that extending my term might seem rather extraordinary to some, uh, but it's not the first time that that's happened, uh, that someone has held the position for three years, um, particularly during a time when continuity is key. Uh, I, I do believe that I've served the county well uh, in an open, unbiased and business-like fashion, and, and my focus has always been on ensuring that the business at the hand is taken care of and I follow the agreed upon will and path of council. This has been an extraordinary year as I'm sure that we uh, would all agree to in fulfilling the duties of this particular job. Uh, I, I know you've all had difficult times as a result of the pandemic. The workload has been immense um, and uh, you know we, we've all just had to slog our way through it. Um, and unfortunately, it, uh, it has come with none of some of the perks that do come with the job of being the warden. Um, and, but that's not why I've been in, in, uh, in this position. Um, I, I just have tried to remain steadfastly available every single day 
since the pandemic began. Uh, for me, some of the most compelling arguments for my continuing in the position is continuity. And, and I've made this point to all of you. Um, I, I believe that continuity is vital. Uh, we do remain under a state of local emergency. And, and I've been working closely with all of the department heads uh, since early March. Uh, and continuity during such times brings consistency in decision making. And, and I truly believe that it's helpful for staff as they've been navigating their way through these uncertain times. And, and it, not just here at work, but at home as well. Um, we've all been feeling the impact of the pandemic. The Wardens Caucus outlined a number of priorities and initiatives for the year, and, and we're unable to achieve some of them. However, the EOWC has proven to be nimble in reassessing those priorities and working hard to help the provincial government move forward with issues like long-term care, paramedic service, broadband, and economic recovery for both business and municipalities. And, and I've been proud to take part in those discussions and, and help in the decision-making. Uh, there have been numerous discussions about the importance of continuity even within the EOWC membership, particularly during these quickly changing times. And I know that some of the membership or many of the membership actually look forward to my return, uh, should I be fortunate. Uh, the pandemic, again, has challenged us all. Uh, we've all had to deal with a very different type of workload and assume responsibilities that have made our earlier goals and objectives that we set uh, pretty hard to achieve. Uh, I, I think as Deputy Mayor that I've been able to ease the workload of all of the heads of council a little bit. Uh, and I've been pleased to be able to do that because you've all had to shoulder a lot more um, and we'll have to continue to do so for some period of time. Um, the public is about to receive the service delivery review report, and we're about to enter into some pretty high level discussions on areas of collaboration. I know that both Dysart and Minden Hills could in some of these discussions have a lot more at stake than Algonquin Highlands or Highlands East. Um, and, and I might be in a better position to lead those discussions as, as a deputy mayor. I can honestly say that I have no preconceived bias or thoughts about the outcome of the service delivery review, other than having a willingness to work hard to see improvements made uh, that will benefit each of our municipalities and all of our residents, most particularly. I, again, I'd be proud to continue as your warden. I believe that I, I have good community support and a good rapport with all of you. And, and I believe that I'm best suited to serve you at this particular time. Um, I, I'd like to just take a brief moment to offer my thanks to, uh, to our CAO, Mike, who's offered me solid advice and guidance and support as our CAO and to all of our staff. They've all worked hard and they've worked well with me. And I truly appreciate that. Um, you know, that it's been difficult circumstances and, uh, and I can't thank any of you enough. Um, I'd like to thank you all and, and just add that if, if I'm not successful, I will be truly pleased to, to offer my full support to Councillor Dwolin should he uh, be our next warden. Thank you. Back to you, Warden. With that, um, I think we would like a mover and a seconder for uh, uh, to move into closed, Councillor Roberts and- May I Oh, yep, yeah. go ahead, sorry. Before we go into close, may I ask, uh, and thank you both for your speeches. They were excellent and uh, I congratulate both of you for putting your names forward, really. It, in terms of the time, I did check with um, with Mike Rutter to see if we were able to move the time of, not the date, but to possibly like three or four o'clock to give uh, Councillor Kennedy and myself ample time if that's not possible to do like we have changed meetings at dicer before without changing our procedural bylaws so I, I don't know if that's possible and if it's not councillor kennedy will just have to if we're not finished our dicer council meeting we'll have to just go into a long re or a recess and uh reconvene so just is it possible to change the time to say three or four o'clock thoughts from members of council Councilor Moffat. 
I certainly have no challenge with that. Uh, just by way of history, the, the inaugural was moved to uh, 2 p.m. to accommodate uh, bad weather and, and long drives. And of course, we, we can't predict that, but I certainly have no problem changing the time to accommodate uh, Dysart. Okay. It used to be 7 p.m., you're right. Yeah. But then we meet the next day. So it, is it possible, Mike? Uh, well, again, uh, from a, the procedural bylaw says that it will take place at 2 o'clock. Uh, the, so it, it specifies the time. Um, the, the way the procedural bylaw words is that an amendment, there would be a notice at the previous meeting that the procedural bylaw would be amended. Um, and so um, I, I guess if there's an agreement, County Council can do uh, what they wish. I, I would say, I would leave it at that. So the only, I didn't want to change the whole procedural bylaw. It's uh, hopefully just for this year or or maybe just put it at four o'clock I, I don't know it would it would suit us but we are only two councillors and I will make the Dicer council meeting work however I, I thought it was just as simple like we could just change the time but I don't know what do others think you're, you're muted you you're muted warden Danielson sorry I got a bit of a mixed message from our CAO about you can't change the time, you can change the time. Um, I don't have an issue with four o'clock and, and I, I'm not sure that anybody else would. Does anyone have an issue with four o'clock? I think for everyone's purposes, we'd like us all to be here. Okay, so we can, we can agree on that. Show of hands, four o'clock. Thank you. Is, is that sufficient for your purposes or do we need a resolution? I was gonna say yes and no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. uh, so I think I was looking for a mover and a seconder to go into closed and, and we'll have a 15 minute break. Councillor Moffat and Councillor Shell, thank you. Moved by Councillor Moffat, seconded by Councillor Shell. Be it resolved that Halliburton County Council enter into closed session as per section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended for the following reasons. Personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. A trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, financial, or labor relations information supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board which if disclosed could reasonably be expected to prejudice significantly the competitive position or interfere significantly with the contractual or other negotiations of a person, group of persons or organization and a position plan procedure criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiation carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board. All in favor? Carried. Um, Okay, so we will we'll see everyone in 15 minutes. Sorry, I can't see my clock, so I can't tell you exactly what time. Oh, we're live. Morning. Okay, welcome back to the open session. Um, I have, could I have a mover and a seconder for a resolution that comes out of closed? Councillor DeBolin, Councillor Moffat. So I have drafted the resolution. Uh, if the mover and seconder would let me know if it is acceptable. Uh, be it resolved that Halliburton County Council directs staff to write a letter to Minister of Infrastructure, Scott, requesting the results of intake one uh, requesting that the results of intake one be uh, announced as soon as possible, as they will inform the county's uh, 
uh, future efforts to expand broadband, broadband accessibility in the county. And further that we request, we formally request an extension to the intake two deadline as it would allow us to make plans which uh, knowing which areas will receive enhanced coverage as a result of intake one projects. Um, do we need to add uh, reference to the icon that is the icon program that we're uh, I think I talked about intake. Uh, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, question from Councillor Moffat. Uh, it was exactly what you'd said is to make reference to the program name. Yeah, okay. Any other questions or comments? Is that fair for the uh, mover and seconder? Okay, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, we'll move into uh, the uh, approval of the tariffs and fees bylaw. Could I have a mover and a seconder for that resolution, please? Councilor Roberts and Councilor Kennedy. Moved by Councilor Roberts, seconded by Councilor Kennedy. Be it resolved that bylaw 4019, being a bylaw to establish a tariff of fees for the County of Halberton, be considered read a first, second, third time, finally passed, and the seal of the corporation be affixed. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, we have, is there any notice of motion? Hearing none, could I have a mover and a seconder for the confirmation bylaw, please? Councillor Shell, Councillor Moffat. Moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor Moffat. Be it resolved that bylaw 4020, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the November 25th, 2020 meeting of Halberton County Council be considered read a first, second, third time, finally passed, and the seal of the corporation be affixed. All in favor? Carried, thank you. And a mover and a seconder for a, a, an adjournment. Councillor Kennedy and Councillor Burton. Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Burton, be it resolved that the November 25th, 2020 meeting of Halliburton County Council be adjourned. All in favor? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you all soon, shortly.